Hello everyone, my name is Amanda Waldhart and you are here with Amanda's InspirationStation.com. Thank you for joining me for this week's Weekly Wednesday. Um, I, I feel I was setting up this this morning and I was getting myself all ready for this video and I thought, wow, I've really been concentrating every Wednesday when I do my Weekly Wednesdays on Halloween, but... I love Halloween. Like, I love doing Halloween treats and gifts and cards. And sadly, I don't have a lot of people to send cards to, Halloween cards to, but I still love making them. So I have been featuring um, for quite a few weeks now the cute Halloween bundle with the punch and the stamp set. So this time, I really wanted to do the frightfully cute bundle. Um, this is also a bundle, but this is not a bundle with a punch. This is actually a bundle with dies. Um, and I love it because you get the cobweb, you get the witch's hat, you get the eerie tree. And I love these shapes, especially this one. This one's my favorite. The little owl, the fence, you get little tags. I, I love it. I, like I said, I feel like Stamping Up just nailed Halloween this year. Everything they chose. So, I have two projects to share with you today. Um, one is a Halloween card. So we're just going to make this Halloween card, which I like. Um, it says less trick and more treating. <laughs> I think it's so cute. Um, so we're going to do that one. Now, I did use, obviously, the cute Halloween designer series paper, um, which is six by six paper stacks. And... If you do not have that and you love Halloween, that should be on your wish list because it's great. And then we are going to do a two, four, six, eight box. And I don't know. I know I've done these before. I don't know if you've seen other people do these, but they're fun and they're not they're not too hard to make. Um, I really enjoy making them, actually. So we're going to make a little bit different. We're going to we're going to play it up a little bit different today. So normally when I show you a project we make a, the exact same project, but I wanna show you something because we're gonna switch it up today. So I went to my local Bath and Body Works. I live in Janesville, Wisconsin, and their Halloween, and I went like a month ago, was so depleted already. I was so kind of sad. So I did get a few fun things though. I got this Happy Halloween and it's just a shimmer mist. So I thought this one would be cute for this box, but they didn't have two of these. So I got this instead. And this is antibacterial hand spray. And since they were the same size bottles, I thought, and the cute Halloween designer series paper, which you know what, I'm going to pull this out, has bats on it. I thought, well, how perfect is that? We'll just switch it up a little bit and we'll change the video and we'll do two of them. So on page 51 of your mini catalog, this is the designer series paper. So there's like, you know, bats, there's ghosts, there's cats and pumpkins and skulls and all kinds of stuff. So we are switching it up just a little bit. And we're going to use the bats. Now, one other thing. Every Wednesday when I come on here and I do a weekly Wednesday, I always have a free printable project sheet on the projects that we did. You can go straight to amandasinspirationstation.com and... Um, if you're watching me on YouTube, there's a link below. You just click on it and you can print the project sheet. I have it all easy to click for you. Click right below and it'll take you directly to it. It's an instant download to your computer and then you can print it. Um, now with the project sheet, I have this box. So I will not have the box on there that we make today, but I will post pictures of the box that we make today and I will also... Um, post them within the next couple of days on my blog so that you can see that on there too. All right, let's start with the card first. Let's do the card first. And if you are not a current YouTube subscriber of mine, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. Um, again, I do come on here once a week on Wednesdays, but sometimes I come on here randomly on other days as well. So, all right, let's make this card. 
We are going to start with a black piece of cardstock measured at five and a half by eight and a half. Now, if you score it, you'd score it at four and a fourth, or you can just fold in half. Either way, use your bone folder to varnish in the creases. All right. Now, I have the next piece here is just basic white measured at four by five and a fourth. I'm going to put this on the inside of my card. This is so that if I mail it out or I give it out, I can go ahead and I can write in it and they can see it. Unless, of course, I use like a chalk marker inside. Those always look cool. Or like a white gel pen. Those look cool too. Um, all right, so the next piece is our designer series paper. And we're going to do the side with the haunted houses. Now, this piece measures at three and three-fourths by five. And I'm just going to place that flat and I'm going to center it. I wanted this piece to be a little bit smaller because I wanted the black outer edge to be a little bit more um, dominant. Now I have two pieces, three die cuts here. Well, I don't know why I have this die cut. We don't use this die cut, so that must have been an extra. So I have a couple die cut pieces here. These right here are from the Hippo and Friends dies. They are in the annual catalog. And I did one in old olive and one in white. And there's only three sizes in this shape. So this is the largest size. This is the second to largest. Once I cut this out in the largest size, I then turned around and I used my um, checks and dots embossing folder. And I literally embossed it just to give it, you know, a little extra texture. I like it. It's fun. Then I have these two little banners. Um, I just literally cut these, and I don't even know what size these are. I'm sorry. Two by one, one by twos. Um, and then I just did a little notch in them. You can use your scissors for the notch. You can use the banner pick-a-punch for it. Um, your tailored tag punch, you could use that to do the notch. Then I have black glitter paper um, that's in the catalog as well. And I already, for the sake of the video, die cut it out the web. We have black and white gingham ribbon here. And then I have a little scrap for the like poison bottles or whatever you want to call it. So let's go ahead and let's get stamping. So let's stamp. We are going to get out our memento. And I want to do my little spider here because I want him to kind of come over um, up on the top left there. And then we want to do less trick and more treating, which I love that scene. I think that's so cute. And we're going to kind of bring that. I'm going to bring it more over to the left just because I want up on the top here my um, web to kind of overlap it. And then I also want to be able to overlap my little, my little bottles here. My little, I like to call them poison bottles. Ooh, that one's stuck. There we go. Hey, yay. Okay, so I use Memento because I'm going to use Dark Old Olive, Dark Highlander Heather, and I'm going to use, um, well, I was going to use it. I don't know what I did with it. I wanted to use the blend um, Dark uh, Pumpkin Pie, but I don't, you know what? I think it's on my table because I have Hostess Club. Or I had Hostess Club last night. So um, I bet you it's still over there on my table. So we'll just use the marker marker. It's not a big deal because I don't want to get up and. All right, so let's color in. I'm going to color in the center of this one in the old olive. Then I'm going to do the Highland Heather in the center here. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll just do... And I'm going to do every other one here just to kind of give it like a little striped look and make the bubbles. And then I'll do like these little curly things here. But I do want to keep some of it white. And then I'm just going to use my Wink of Stella and I'm going to kind of color it over just to kind of give it a little, little glitter. All right, I'm going to let this dry before I fussy cut this out. So let's go ahead and start putting this on. We are gonna put this piece, this die piece flat onto this piece, but we're going to pop this up with dimensionals. So we definitely want dimensionals for this. 
So I'm going to grab those. And we will then center this kind of over here. Now with these, I'm going to just kind of put some stamp and seal on the back of them. And what I'm just gonna kind of do is I'm just gonna kind of tuck them under. I'm gonna kind of tuck it like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of tuck it like that. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to use a dimensional, but I'm going to use a black dimensional. That way we won't see it. And I'm just gonna put one in the center. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to actually put it on the green part here, just like that, so it kind of pops up like that. And I'm gonna get my bow maker out because we're gonna need a little ribbon here. So I'm going to um, make a bow. And um, I do have a video if you subscribe to me or if you want to scroll back through, I do have a video on how to use this bow maker. And I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm gonna use my glue dots here to put the bow on. I love this ribbon. Who else loves this ribbon? I think it was on back order. It still might be. So clearly everybody loves this ribbon, <laughs> right? Most everybody. I love it. I like that you can color it too. I think that's what it is awesome. Not, I mean, black and white alone is great, but um, the fact that you can color it too, it just is awesome. All right. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm literally just going to kind of fussy cut, but I, I'm not going to be perfect about it, you guys. Don't don't fret. I know there's some people out there that don't like to fussy cut. We're not going to be perfect. Boom, like that. That's all we're doing. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of it. Like this. And then we're just going to offset the bottles. There we go. There is a cute Halloween card. I love it. So cute. I love Halloween. I love it. Um, all right. Let's work on our box now. I'm excited to do this box because I'm excited to do it a little bit different. All right. So I'm going to get out my Simply Score tool. We're going to need that. And you're going to need, I picked basic black. So um, you're going to need your cardstock to measure at eight and a half by ten and a half. Okay. So you're going to want the eight and a half side going across. So that would be the short side. And we're going to score it. Like I said, this is a two, four, six box. So we're going to score it at two inches. We're going to score it at four inches. We're going to score it at six inches. And then we're going to score it at eight inches. That got a little away from me. Let's see if I just bent it or if I... If you ever do jump the tracks, just flip it over and kind of gently, gently um, rub it out. I don't really think I really, I kind of just crinkled it a little bit is what I did. Not a big deal. All right, so now we're going to turn it and we're, we want it to be on our landscape side, which is also our 10 and a half, 10 and a half inch side. And we are going to score it at a half an inch. And this, this gets a little kind of crazy because it's right up to the edge. So I'm going to kind of go slow so I don't jump the track. We're going to do it at two and a half. And then we're going to do it at eight. And then we're going to do it at 10. Okay, so that should be what it looks like. Right. I know it's kind of hard to see, especially with black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just take my bone folder and I'm going to just kind of varnish in the creases. And I'm going to all right, just like that. And then what we're going to do is I brought this box out too so that we could I could show you guys just how 
um, easy it really was, but I didn't, I wanted to show you, give me just a moment, because I'm going to open it up so you can see what the pattern of it would look like. So this is what it's going to look like once you cut it. So if you're looking at this like this, you have your main center here is two, two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. This is now your tab to close. So this is how I personally look at it. So I want to, I want to notch that right there because I know this is going to be my notch to, to close it. And I'm just going to cut on that score line this completely off on each side. Everybody has their own way of like which one, how they want to do it at first, but um, it, it's totally up to you. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut on the score lines on all of these. And we're going to just go all the way up to this score line on all of them. Okay. Now I do not need this. I actually don't need this piece at all. We're gonna get rid of this piece. So now I'm gonna score, I'm gonna cut right on the score line right there to cut that completely off. This one we are going to use, but we do not need this little guy. And this one is gonna be the top part of our box. We're gonna round this, so we're gonna use the detailed um, trio punch, but we're gonna wait, because now we have to do the same thing on this side. So we're going to exact same thing. We're just repeating it on two sides. So we're going to go all the way up to our score lines, cut on the score lines up to our score line. Same thing here on this side. We don't need this little guy, so we're going to cut that completely off. And give me a second because I didn't cut that very straight. There we go. This one we do not need at all, so we're going to cut this one completely off. I'm trying to cut this. There we go. This one we don't need this piece. And then this will be our top of our tab. So let's get our um, corner punch. If you have whatever corner punch you have, um, Stampin' Up! currently has this detailed um, trio punch. You can use that. If you have Stampin' Up's old envelope punch board, or I, I think all envelope punch boards have a corner rounder in the back of it, you could use that if you didn't have this. Um, so we're just rounding those off like that. Okay. So that is our box. All right. So we now need some designer series paper and we need four of them that are going to be our sides and this time we are using this and th these measure at one and three fourths sorry I'm trying to pick up these extra little pieces here one and three fourths by five and a fourth so that's what these are and you're going to need four of them and I want to make sure that I have them going the right direction so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them on my box now so we're going to just put some, we're going to go ahead and put that on there like that. They are so cute. I love these little bats. And you know what? If my kids were to ever watch my videos, which my girls don't, um, they would make fun of me for saying this. But when my kids were little, especially my youngest daughter, Ellie, she loved Count on Sesame Street. And so every time I see the bats, I always want to go one, batty, 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 bat, two, and then on and on. But I won't. I'll spare you guys. <laughs> I will totally spare it. Okay. So there's our designer series paper. Now we need some tear and tape, or you can use um, multi-purpose green glue, whatever you want. For this part, I will be honest, I normally like using the multi-adhesive green glue when I do boxes, because if I make a mistake, I have that couple, you know, minute or so to like really wiggle it and, you know, fix it if it's on crooked. But with this box, this is how easy this box is going to be. I'm going to show you how easy this box is going to be for us. So we're going to take this piece of tear, 
tear and tape part off here, just like that. And I'm going to now flip it over. I'm gonna bring this down like this. I'm just bringing this flap down. And now I'm just gonna fold this flap over. And that is our box. That's how easy it is for you to do this, this particular box. So this is our bottom of our box. So we're gonna bring in the flaps and bring in the tab down at the bottom. Now, if you have an issue sometimes closing it, um, it just means that these pieces here might need to be trimmed slightly, like the little score line. So you can go in and you can just trim it just ever so slightly like this. It just helps so that it closes it. So let's put in our antibacterial hand spray. Yay. Don't do it too, don't snip too much off though. Just do a very small like little dart or sliver. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because if you do, it'll mean like the tab, like for instance, this one. See how my tab keeps wanting to pop up? It's not wanting to stay because I, I, I cut a little too much off. But you know what? Sometimes that happens. So we'll just, there's that one. See, now it's not popping open completely. All right, so let's do some stamping. We got our box done. We got our awesome little gift inside there. So now we need to do some stamping. We need to stamp the moon. We have a few other designer series pieces. And with this one, we did the witch hat. And we did which way to the candy. Well, we're not doing witches this time. We're doing bats. So I thought we would do the saying, you're so sweet, it's scary. And this is where my brain went. Um, because bats, I think of like Dracula. <laughs> I think of like vampires. <laughs> so I'm thinking sweet like blood. I don't know. I don't know where I went with that. But, you know, it's just kind of those scary movies. So we're going to use that saying. And I'm going to actually do it in pumpkin pie and not the gorgeous grape that I used in this one because there's pumpkin pie um, in the little pumpkin. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to do the pumpkin pie. So we're going to do that in pumpkin pie. And instead of doing the little spider, I hope you guys can see this. So doing the little spider coming down, we're going to do the little bat because that's what we're doing, our little bats. So then I thought we would just do the little bat cute. That's cute. All right. So now for the moon, we're going to do tone on tone. So I got bumblebee here and I'm got bumblebee cardstock and we're just going to go like that. And I just realized I'm going to need to cut that out. So we'll get, get the die out for that. And let's cut that out. I should have my little mini cut and emboss machine that would have been perfect over here but of course that's across the room so we will just do my big one all right so I'm going to run that through and there we go so we can save that for another day and I am going to wink a Stella it, but I'm going to wink a Stella it after I put it on the box, only because I don't want to have to wait till it dries. So which one's the front? Okay, so here's the front. So before we put this on, <clears throat> I do want to do two things, and then we're going to wrap some ribbon around it. I have some designer series paper here. Now the width of this box is two inches. I went ahead and made this exactly two inches as well. So it does overlap the other one. So I'm going to do that. I kind of, you guys, hold on. Nope, I like it black and white or the orange and black. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to do this other little banner here which this is two, this is a one inch by um, two. There we go. Now let's get our ribbon. Now, because we want to get our ribbon tucked under these. So what I do with ribbon, <clears throat> I just put it under the box. I bring it over to the side. 
and I want to make sure that there's a good five to six inches on each side of the ribbon over here for me to be able to tie a nice size bow. Nothing like cutting a piece of ribbon and then realizing that <clears throat> you don't even have enough to do a bow. That's a bummer. So don't be shy with your ribbon. I used to be so stingy with my ribbon. Like on my projects, I'd be like, oh, I can only use a little bit or whatever. And then I would end up having all this ribbon left over. And I was like, no, this ribbon is gorgeous, Amanda. <laughs> Share it. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, some people are paper hoarders. Cut it up. All right. <clears throat> So we're gonna put that there. All right, so now we are going to get out our dimensionals and we're going to pop this guy up. And I haven't decided exactly where we're gonna do our moon. So let's put our moon. We know where we want that. That's gonna go up here. Oh, but that's gonna cover that cute bat's face. You know what, I don't want that. I like that little bat. Okay, so you know what, we're gonna improvise here. I'm gonna bring the moon down a little bit, I think. And I think maybe what I'll do, maybe I'll tuck, maybe I'll tuck this over the moon so you're seeing a little, oh, there it is. See, we're doing this together, you guys. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna tuck this in, but to secure it, I wanna do a little glue dot. I wanna make sure that, then you got like the tree over the moon. And I need to do one more dimensional because I can feel it's not quite. So we're gonna tuck that under. There, now we can still see that little bat because that bat's adorable. You guys, what do you think? How cute are those? I love these hand um, antibacterial hand sprays that Bath and Body Works has. And these boxes are not hard. Again, you'll have the measurements right there in the project sheet, so print that out. Um, it's right underneath the link of the video. Um, also, I would love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you hop over to Amanda's Inspiration Station, I would love for you to sign up for my newsletter. Um, I do promotions. I also let you know when Stamping Up has promotions. I have all kinds of different fun stuff. Hop on over there. Um, if you have any questions, message me. I would love to hear from you. You guys have a great rest of your week and yay, I love how these turned out. They're so cute. Okay, you guys have a great rest of your week. Talk to you next week. Bye.